Hey everybody, thanks for watching Peace, Love, and Guns. My name is Will, and today we're taking a look at the Aero Precision M4E1 Enhanced Upper. This is a custom upper with components that uh, I selected, and uh, we're going to take a look at it today. Let's go ahead and crack into the, the nice little box that they have here. Uh, you can see that it is made proudly in the U.S. of A. In... Um... Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma, Washington. So yeah, got a little bit of foamage, and uh, here it is right here. Uh, it's in a nicely padded little box. There's foam all the way around, and uh, yeah. that's that's that right there. This is the M4E1 Enhanced Upper by Aero Precision. The handguard is called the Quantum Handguard. It is a free-floated handguard. It attaches to the upper with eight different Torx screws, which is nice that it's Torx. That was a relief to see that. It wasn't uh, Allen. because Or we're... Flathead. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Phillips or... Yeah. It does have a removable Picatinny rail up at the front. And uh, this is kind of a octagonal design and cross-section. Um, so if I point this at you, you can kind of see that it's kind of got an octagonal cross section. My all public of, safety. All of the corners are broken and there's kind of these flutes uh, along where the points of the octagon would be. And uh, it feels really good. The barrel is a 16 inch uh, standard or thin profile. I believe, is it a pencil profile? Standard profile, ballistic advantage. Okay. Standard profile, ballistic advantage barrel. It's a bead blasted stainless finish, um, which I thought was gonna throw off kind of the look of the gun, but you can barely see it through the M-lock compatible holes in the receiver, or the in the handguard rather. Um, and then it of course comes with a, a muzzle device on it. This is a, a standard A2 bird cage, which we will uh, change that out probably for a Griffin armament to match the receiver that's currently on my SIG PM400. Uh, it does, of course, have a forward assist, and in the configuration that I ordered this thing, um, since I'm a poor, uh, I ordered it without a bolt carrier group because I'm going to just reuse my Raptor charging handle and my Sig bolt, um, my Sig PM400 uh, bolt carrier group in this, and just snap it down. Ultimately, this is going to be a budget build with a magnified optic. Uh, for shooting uh, the 223 wild chambering so uh, that's uh, that's kind of the intent of this thing uh, since this is a budget build um, I did get this through Gray Fox Ranch on a Black Friday super special deal it was so good I can't even tell you how good it was but it was pretty good not gonna lie um, it's also a Black Friday budget gun because at least in its current iteration I'm gonna be equipping it with stuff that I got from um, some generous sponsors to the channel. Um, we have a red dot sight and uh, some angled iron sights that we're gonna throw on it. Uh, probably beat those up and just show you kind of what that quality looks like um, from an Amazon seller that sent me these for free. His name is uh, Richard Theros, uh, contacted me on my uh, Facebook group, uh, the Peace, Love and Guns Facebook group. So. If uh, you are so interested, uh, come check our discussions out there in the links will be down in the doobly doo down below. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, snap this baby onto the lower here. <clears throat> so here we have a SIG PM400 as outfitted by yours truly. Um, we have the love and the peace, which are uh, so common to this channel. Uh, of course, we've got uh, standard A2 front sight post and the little Magpul backup and EOTech uh, 512 or 3 or whatever it is and um, yeah the uh, the PM rather the the shockwave uh, pistol brace and uh, tactical link battery assist device some no-name uh, ambidextrous short throw 45 degree uh, selector lever Griffin armament uh, muzzle device, which is kind of a battle comp inspired uh, muzzle brake compensator device, uh, a crappy flashlight, 
I think it's called a guard dog or something like that. Got it at Academy, it's rechargeable, yay. And of course the Magpul uh, fix-ins there. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and snap this upper off of there. Assuming that I can get that off uh, with any sort of speed and non-goofiness. Your flashlight's freaking out. You what? Oh, it's on SOS mode. And, um, so there's my pistol upper with 11 and a half inch barrel that came with the gun. And, uh, here we go with the, uh, with the new upper. Just, uh, gently, ever so gently. Snap that baby on there. And, um... Put our Raptor charging handle in and our bolt carrier group. Do this as awkwardly as possible for the camera. And the bolt goes in like so. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, and there we have function check, boy. So uh, immediately, one of my pet peeves is guns that ring like a bell when you shoot them or when you rack the slide. This kind of gets that effect until you put your hand right on it and then it stops. That's, that's good. So uh, it feels pretty good. I mean, bing, bing, bing. Uh, I've got all the controls, which I uh, am familiar with and like from my pistol build, the Raptor ambidextrous charging handle, which I'm very fond of, uh, the tactical link battery assist device, ambidextrous short throw 45 degree um, selector lever, and of course the ambidextrous quasi ambidextrous uh, SIG PM400 magazine release, and of course the Shockwave. All right, so here we go with the uh, budget Black Friday Super Duper Gray Fox Ranch Peace Loving Guns Custom Collaboration AR-15 Pistol Rifle Length AR. And uh, let's go ahead and put a, a, a red dot sight on it and some angled iron sights just for giggles. All right, this is not gonna be the final permutation of this gun. So here we have the Marmot. 45 degree offset AR-15 sights and uh, they're about 23 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I can't say that they are Troy Industries quality. They do have kind of the snap action uh, button there. Uh, I do have one complaint with them already and that is that this tensioner, this is a, a flathead screw, which is flathead, which kind of sucks but the tensioner here controls the tightness of how hard that button is to press. I'm not sure if it has any bearing on the actual repeatable zero with this, snapping it up and back, but um, it positively locks into place. Uh, there's just a little bit of play there, um, which, you know, if you have a set of Magpul sights or whatnot, backup iron sights kind of have a little bit of jiggle to them uh, where they're articulated. But um, that's the case with the front sight as well. Um, just there is the one caveat that the button that releases that and that requires you to unlock it to push it down. Uh, that guy is also the tension screw which holds the thing together. So that's kind of a weird design choice. Um, so already I'm not certain if these are going to hold up long term, if these are going to if this is something I would put on a battle rifle or a home defense weapon, but we're gonna throw them on there. I'm gonna beat them up. We're gonna give them a fair chance and see how they do. So that's the Marmot 45 degree offset sights. And here we have the Marmot uh, red dot sight. Uh, you can see it's got a little red 
uh, coating on there and it's got a number of brightness settings with the CR2032 battery, which you're familiar with, uh, separate windage and elevation adjustments that are... Did it come with the battery? Say again? Did it come with the battery? Yeah, it did come with the battery. And these are O-ring sealed um, elevation screw caps, uh, which we have come to expect uh, as standard. Uh, so yeah, so that'll probably be a, a nice little bargain red dot site. I don't recall off the top of my head how much this costs, but I can probably just annotate it down in the doobly-doo below. Um, but we're gonna throw this gear onto this gun and uh, we're gonna shoot it like that. Maybe uh, beat these things up some to let you know if they're worth your hard-earned American pesos. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. The tools are included for the marmot uh, sites here. Even the tool that it arrives to? Say again? So even the tool that it delivers to? Mm -hmm. Is that going to get caught on that deflector? I don't know. Maybe. It seems like a pretty dope place to put it, though. It's like it's part of the deflector now. Oi! So, uh, do I want to put it back one? Well, if it melts the deflector, it's actually a good spot for it. But... Uh, I want to have some room in front of it that's there. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I rather like that. If, right. if it starts binding on the deflector, though, I would uh, reposition. Oh, yeah, for certainly. For certain. Do you have clearance on it? It looks like there's clearance. I think so, senor. Her. Click. Click. All right, now that's a permanent part of the gun, and it's never going to come off. All right. Okay, here we go with the front sides. Concentration. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, like hanging out right there up at the front. You didn't need me to hold it on there? Or? I just need to not be about her fingers. Her. Flick. Right. And uh, that's kind of neat the way that it, it fits kind of flat along this side of the octagon of the rail. And uh, I really thought from the photos that it looked like they hung out and jutted off at a weird angle kind of. Uh, but with the design of this rail and with the way that this uh, brass deflector is, it kind of uh, fits with the lines of the gun a lot better than I had anticipated it would so uh, that's actually kind of surprising and nice and that actually feels a lot better than I thought it would feel looks okay. good so those um, these guys out of the box are um, unimpressive feeling but getting them on this gun in particular, it feels pretty good. I mean, yeah, I totally didn't expect it to, uh, to behave that way. How's the tensioners work? So they're just a flat screw, and you adjust them with the with your thumb here. Now, if I, the problem with it is, if I make it go too tight, you can't push the screw in anymore. You can't push the button in anymore, which is also a screw, and I can't flip it down. So, you gotta find a happy place. Yeah. So it's almost like you go to a finger tight, and then it is just tight enough to allow you to snap it up, and it locks. But yeah. Does so. it come with any kind of instructions? That's what this video is for. <laughs> Right, exactly. So, uh, yeah. You look so tactical. Okay. 
So, uh, I have to say that uh, I'm pretty reasonably uh, excited about that. Uh, one thing I do notice about this front sight, which is super awesome uh, right now, is it doesn't lay flat. It hangs up. It uh, pushes up under spring tension. You can kind of see where this is the upward access here, the barrel. This would be flat, and it's kind of just pushing up. And then when you do shoot it forward like that, it doesn't. it's not directly up from the base of it. It is pushing forward instead of it locking square at a right angle. Well, as long as it comes back to the exact same position every time, it's not too big a deal. Agreed, but... yeah. And the rear <coughs> one really does the same thing as well. Now that one looks like it's a little bit more right angled, but... Okay. All right, now for the red dot sight. The Marmot Red Dot Sight comes with a Torx screw as well. Rather, it uh, is a is a Torx bit, um, whereas the Marmot Iron Sights, the Marmot Angled Iron Sights, are a Allen key. But let's go ahead and put this on. All right. <coughs> It does not come with a. It does not come with a height block, which shouldn't matter a whole lot uh, with regard to sight placement, because we're not trying to co-witness with iron sights. That said, it is going to be very low to the bore, uh, which is not something that you are traditionally doing with an AR-15. So we'll see how disturbing that is. It will probably be just fine. All right. All right, this is a completely accurized scope right here now. Yeah. What's well, got an eighth MOA red dot on it? You know, I don't know how big the, the dot is. I couldn't tell you from here, but it looks pretty, pretty fine. Uh, with uh, glasses on, I have to get down really low to see that, which you might expect. All right, so there is a, a pew pew with a pew pew and a pew pew on there. All right, so here we go. We've got the Marmot Red Dot Sight. Let's see if we can call it what it is here. Let's see. How it <clears throat> so we have the Marmot Red Dot Sight on the new Peace Loving Guns, Gray Fox Gunsmithing, Arrow Precision, Upper with the SIG PM400 Lower. And uh, yeah, we've got the Marmot Red Dot Sight and the Marmot Angled Iron Sights on there as well. So uh, why don't we shoot it and have some fun. Peace Loving Guns Budget Build. Chambers. Can't see. Oh, I guess I put more than that in there. That was not a fail to hold open. That was a fail to pay attention. Oh, I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> well, if anybody asks. I thought I put six in, but I guess it didn't. All right. God, that almost stinks. It's federal. All right. Good job. So she runs. She worky. Did we expect it wasn't going to run? You just want to make sure. Yeah. I don't care if the gun costs $5,000. You still have to make sure it works. All right. Because that's, you can all set yeah. up, all ready to go, and click. It's really difficult to get low enough. Uh, to that red dot sight if you mount it directly onto an AR Picatinny rail like that. Um, 
not super recommended for this application. I think that uh, for, I don't know how much this cost, we'll annotate it, but however much it cost, it probably deserves to have a, a one inch sight block underneath it. It should probably come with that, uh, in my opinion, because so many guys are gonna wanna put these on ARs. I don't recommend doing this with this optic. These, however, seem pretty good so far. Uh, we gotta really make sure this thing works though. Let's see if it'll bump fire. Probably not. So uh, 30 rounds in pretty rapid succession. I cannot feel the heat through the barrel trunnion area or the handguard. In fact, up here it's cold to the touch still. Very comfortable. Yeah. And I can feel the heat coming up through the holes right there by the trunnion. The trunnion. That's a pretty sharp looking little gun as it sits there, huh? All right, so uh, we're just going to take some shots at approximately 100 yards, trying to hit a steel plate about 8 inches using the angled iron sights, the Marmot angled iron sights. I have to say that I'm not super impressed with the Marmot red dot sight in the configuration on an AR-15 like this. You cannot get low enough to see through the optic if you mount it directly to the Picatinny rail. So I think for $46 or however much this cost, it would be much better value if it came with a riser to use it on AR-15 weapons, which most people are probably going to be interested in doing. Um, other than that, uh, so far it seems like a standard run-of-the-mill kind of entry-grade red dot sight uh, with no complaints there. Uh, the Marmot 45 degree canted angled irons, uh, aside from their general kind of wiggliness, um, as long as they wiggle back to the same position under spring tension, I think they'll be fine. Having sighted them I'm in at about 20 feet or so, just to kind of get on paper, kind of in the, the realm where I want to be uh, starting off at, um, you can notice that the, the sight is way over to the right, uh, so that it was uh, shooting down the middle. So we'll see how far off we are here, see if I can get some shots on steel. Please, please don't shoot my bed. I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna shoot down and shoot your differential. On the plus side, you're knocking all my mud off. Oh, yeah? But I don't think you're hitting the plate. I don't think I'm hitting the plate either. Shoot lower. Huh? Shoot lower. 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 I'm not even hit, so you're hitting dirt yet. <laughs> 